in the Reed kids traveled as a pack. And my dad was always looking to provide us an adventure. One summer, he borrowed a friend's boat to take us on an outing. We were on a lake. I don't remember if it was Mead or Mojave, when all of a sudden, the engine stalled. And as my dad tried over and over to restart it, the boat began to drift toward a rocky outcropping. Alarmed, he pointed towards the back of the boat and he said, Rory, throw the anchor overboard. As I hurriedly tried to locate the anchor, my dad, his volume increasing, repeated himself, throw it, Rory, throw the anchor. I found it, and I did as he told me to do. And just as I threw it, I realized it wasn't tied to anything. I have no idea how we got back to shore that day. But if, as you've heard from uh, my, my siblings, my father had a keen sense of what we needed as children. And I had a desire to have no adventure. I wanted to just stay home, read a book, watch a movie. So I shouldn't have been surprised one day when he came home and said, hey, Rory, I signed you up for Pop Warner football. Look at me, I'm not built for football. But he was at every game the little casinos had that year. And I still don't know why I played football. I, you know, I, I really don't have any reason to be concussed regularly other than, as I've thought about it, the reason I played football was because it gave me time with my father. He loved it more than I did. And it became central to our relationship as I was a teenager. He came to every high school football game I had. And, and I remember after one big game, my teammates wanted to go out and celebrate. I went home for one reason. I wanted to talk to my dad about the game. And one of my friends called and said, hey, where are you? We're out, you know, somewhere doing this or that. And I mouthed to my dad, please tell me I can't go out. And he did, and I stayed home with him and talked about the game. Later, um, my adventures with my father became more political. In 1986, I told my dad I wanted to volunteer on his Senate campaign, and he seemed real pleased. When I was told I was the campaign's official rural Nevada representative, just like football, I feigned excitement. I put a box of pamphlets in my Cutlass Supreme, and I hit the road. My first, my first assignment was in Ely. Nobody on the campaign had the courtesy to let me know that White Pine County is not Reed country. When I arrived there, I checked into the Copper Queen Motel. I didn't have an event till later that evening, and there's not a lot to do in Ely, so I decided to go knock doors. At the first door, a young girl answered. I asked her, if her parents were home and she said to follow her, we walked through her house into the backyard where her father, a burly fellow with a garden hoe in hand, crouched working. When he looked up at me, I said very proudly, my name is Rory Reed. My father is Congressman Harry Reed. Before I could say another word, the gentleman spewed some expletives raised the hoe above his head, and literally chased me from the yard. So I went back to the Copper Queen and watched a movie. 
Uh, when my dad called to uh, check in later that evening, I told him about my day, and I just remember him laughing. He laughed and laughed, and then he said, wait until you get to Elko County. They really love me there. I've also been thinking a lot about, about a moment I had with my dad when I was, was very young. I was a boy. I was in the hills of Searchlight with him. One of his brother, brothers was there. I think it was Don. My brother Leaf was there, if I remember right. My dad carried a flashlight as he walked a few steps ahead of me. I didn't know where we were going. After a few minutes, we approached a dark opening of a horizontal mine shaft that disappeared deep into the hillside. As I leaned, leaned to one side, he turned on his flashlight, and I peered around him, and when he shined his light into the blackness, I could see the reflection of two bright red eyes that quickly approached, and then a, a rat scurried past us. And my dad must have known I was anxious, so he grabbed two of my small fingers, he hooked them in, in his belt loop, he said, stay close. And I followed him into the shaft, bathed in the light he provided. But any, any discussion of our family or my dad should begin and end in one place, Landra. She was the center of his universe. They met as teenagers. They eloped when they were 19, still teenagers. In over 62 years, they provided us a loving example of how a real partnership should work. Near the end of his life, my dad asked for his glasses. He was real sick and couldn't reach for them himself. So I put them on his face. And for the longest time, he just stared at my mom. There was no need for words. This morning, our family was guided here by a police escort. An apostle of our faith then offered his blessing to us. As you saw, a military procession presented the casket of my father in this grand hall. The leaders of the United States Congress are here in his honor. Presidents Obama and Biden will grace us with their words, and next week my dad will lie in state in the United States Capitol Rotunda in the same spot Abraham Lincoln rested. But what I'll cherish most and never forget is what I saw in the private, quiet moments that I was privileged to share close to a Nevada giant. May the God of heaven and earth continue to ensure that his soul rests in peace. Goodbye, Dad, till we meet again. <laughs>